<laughs> we gotta stop meeting like this. When I see an episode like Ma and Pa's Big Hurrah, it reminds me how much Spongebob has changed over the years. You know, season 1 was kind of its own thing, then they elaborated on it in seasons 2 and 3, but those are also kind of different. Or at least that's my opinion. Like, seasons 2 and 3 are very similar, but you could also piece out differences if you really wanted to. <laughs> And really, that just comes with, like, bringing new writers in, things like that, people also wanting to innovate and change and do new things. And really, since, like, the second half of Season 9, Spongebob has been very experimental. Like, they kind of got into a rut between Seasons 6 through 8 and deciding what they wanted to do with the show, because they were just kind of, like, it, it felt like they were running out of ideas, honestly. It got really bad with the theme, like, with all the vacation episodes. The show has evolved into this really wacky tomfoolery that wasn't really there in the early seasons. It was arguably a lot more grounded with its writing, which is very interesting. But probably the big reason why the show had to change so much as it did was the internet. You get a feeling that it's very clippy. Medicine cabinet, where I keep... Aha! Me magic nose brush! <laughs> Which is ironic in a sense because the biggest clips of Spongebob that are shared on the internet are the early seasons. And that's not only because the quality is better, but it's also because the people sharing it are just having nostalgic feelings from their childhoods about it. Because whenever people started watching Spongebob, they'll say that their time was the best time Spongebob was around. Even though like Pokemon, Spongebob has got a lot of Gen 1ers. Oh, Spongebob, if only you could see how stupid you sound right now with your talk of imaginary plans. Tell you what, you've caught me in a good mood. So Mon Pa's Big Hurrah reminds me of two episodes in particular. One is Home Sweet Pineapple, particularly because his parents show up briefly, not anything really else regarding the episode. Well, except for the nematodes eating Spongebob's house and he has to move. What am I going to do? Where am I going to live? Yeah. The same thing happens with the avocado melting or whatever it does. It just <laughs> not ripe anymore. That's the way I'm gonna put it. Like, what's the word? It's not. Is it stale for fruit? It's not. I guess overripe is the term. Rotting, rotting fruit. That's probably the one. And now it's this role reversal where they have to live with SpongeBob for a brief time. And the big theme of the episode is that you don't have to be an old fuddy-duddy or stuffy or whatever to be a mature adult. But Spongebob has to learn that throughout the episode, because he thinks that his parents want him to be someone like Squidward, which they absolutely do not. In episodes before this, Spongebob's parents are just kind of there, they don't really have much energy to them. For whatever reason, they decide to bring them back, and they are very... frenetic here. Because of that, it reminds me of Grandma's Kisses because you get another case of Spongebob acting out of character deliberately because he thinks that's the expectation of how he should act around other people. Because in Grandma's Kisses, he got ridiculed by the people at the Krusty Krab for being a baby. Well, here, he wants to show his parents that he's a mature adult. Hello, Mata. Peter. And apparently that's a 4 p.m. curfew. <laughs> Will you please stop that confounded racket? Funny thing is his parents have the exact opposite expectation for him. They think he's a young up and coming urbanite. Funny thing about that is Bikini Bob is always referred to as the middle of nowhere. Think of the episode, whatever happened to SpongeBob or whatever that special is called. The population of Bikini Bob is like 500 fish. So his parents thinking that he's an urbanite is just, it's too funny. I mean, there are downtown scenes, so it's like he's in the outer rim of Bikini Bottom. But it's debatable whether this is actually a city. It's probably more like a satellite city, if anything else. The thing is that SpongeBob's parents are in a retirement community. They had an episode where SpongeBob's cousin got out of jail, and SpongeBob went to his parents' house, and it was not in a retirement community. And SpongeBob's only like 22 or something by canon. Which, you know, you'd figure that his parents would be too young to be there, but, you know, they could have had him on the older side. It speaks more to how time has gone on in the world, like, you know, Spongebob has been on for almost 24 years right now, than anything in-universe. 
And SpongeBob always wants to impress his parents, which is always his first mistake, because it leads him to acting differently than what he does normally. And his parents don't want to see a fabricated version of himself, they want to see the real SpongeBob. And there's always the question of whether SpongeBob will ever grow up and be mature. He and his parents ask that question in the episode. But when it's an episodic cartoon, that's never gonna happen. And remember, you can kiss your grandma and still be an adult. Here you go. Thanks, Grandma. And that's why we have the SpongeBob SquarePants movie as the finale, because SpongeBob kind of learns how to grow up and be a mature adult. Well, <laughs> to the best of his ability. And the thing is, we've seen it time and time again with Spongebob like in Not Normal, where normal is just boring. So why not just be weird and be yourself? Because everybody's a little weird. This episode isn't insanely deep, it's more just a comedic romp throughout the whole thing. Which don't get me wrong, it's actually really funny. It's just that there isn't really any particular moment that you can like cling to and say, oh, that speaks for the quality of the episode. Like, it's just an okay episode, it's not anything spectacular. The odd thing is, like, you know it's just like a comedy, but it's got me thinking a little bit more about, like, Spongebob as a character. Which I don't think that was number one on Kaz's list when writing this episode, but you never know. But really, Spongebob's parents were just... way different than they typically are in the show. They just let their hair down this episode. Possibly as a reaction to Spongebob, let's be real. I have taken the liberty of writing up an agenda of activities that I know all of us adults will find most stimulating. So Spongebob may be different, but it's still funny. You had Patrick and Squidward appear a little bit in this episode, and they're hilarious. As they typically are. This is just such an odd episode concept, and I can't get over that. The strange thing though is that it actually works really well. It's not going to be in the running for like the best episode of Spongebob ever, but it's still a very solid offering. I don't love it, but I don't hate it either, if that makes any sense. You know, I really like my stories in addition to the comedy. While I wasn't really big on this type of story, the themes behind it I get. And I think it's worthwhile to explore it, even in the like 24th year of Spongebob. So while this episode was really largely carried by its humor, there's something there that I really like. But you know, if you've seen this episode, let me know your thoughts about it in the comments. And also, what do you think about Spongebob as an adult? Like, he is an adult, but he never acts like it. <coughs> well hey, maybe we need to take more notes from Spongebob and less from Squidward. If you know what I mean. Alright everyone, this is Titanius turning off the TV. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by liking and subscribing. See you next time. Bye. I want satisfaction!